Hi, Richard here. While I was checking my old action figures, I saw that if I want to display them, I don't have enough stands to place them on. These are the old simple ones, which I think you can still get through certain vendors. They're simple plates with a small peg where you can stick the feet onto. I decided to try my hand at making my own custom stands and experiment with casting and resins. It's a simple project to start getting experience with the materials. I start by hot gluing one of the old stands to a board. This will be the base around which I'm going to model my design. Since I'm going to make four different stands, I hot glue three more onto separate boards. And the clay I'm using is simple school grade plastiline. This blue one is old and a little dry, but not much of a problem. I start by covering around the plastic plate with the plastiline clay, making sure not to leave any air pockets where material can seep inside when making the mold. This first one is going to be large rocks where the character can sit on so I do a quick check to give enough space for the foot. Now I set up the major shapes. I don't worry about detail, just get the general masses down. Checking the height now and then to not make it too tall. Now for shaping and detailing. I'm using metal tools, I can get better detail with them, but wood tools will work too.
done. This is how it looks after I tried softening some of its surface with rubbing alcohol and a brush. I think it came out pretty decent. The second stand is intended to look like a patch of turf. I gave it a slight angle when I glued on the original stand. The same as before, block in the general forms first. Detailing should be easier since there aren't any big faceted shapes like the other one. I make sure to cover the plastic plate with a little thin layer of the plastiline. This will make sure that the whole thing looks integrated in a single piece. While doing this I make sure not to affect the height of the little plastic peg. I roughen up the surface by tapping and scratching it with a wire brush. This usually loosens some bits which I tap down with my fingers. The resulting texture should give a good enough appearance of dirt or ground, something like that. And that's done. This next one is meant to be cobblestone. Again, I block in the general shape and cover the plastic stand. I draw out the outlines of each stone to make the pattern. There's no need to go very deep. Following the lines I drew, I cut off the bits I don't need. Next, I have to work the seams so the stones look a little more rounded and without sharp edges. Any bits that come loose and want to stick to the surface I smooth down and make part of the stone.
Now and then I use a lighter to soften and try to melt the plastiline so as to help soften the edges and surface texture. Some people use alcohol torches or heat guns. Whatever works is good, just have to be careful not to burn the material. Some rubbing alcohol can also be used, but the effect is not very visible, since it works like a very mild solvent. Others have used stronger stuff like isopropyl alcohol or even turpentine, but this last one can leave you with a messy goo if you go too heavy with it. Okay, this one is done. The last one is supposed to be a couple stair steps, as if set on a slight incline, like a soft rolling hill or dune. I mark out the reference for how deep the step will go. A stair step will usually be about a foot in depth. As always, start by blocking in the general shapes. The rise of the step is going to be about a half a foot, so have to keep an eye on how high I make the second step. This model requires flatter surfaces and sharper edges. Using a long flat tool works best for this. I added a few sh general shapes to simulate the turf or dirt or sand or whatever. Doing a quick test with the figure to see how it fits before adding texture. Again I use the wire brush to add texture, brushing it along the step to scratch in the wood grain and then flattening it down so it doesn't look too rough. I also work the end grain and sharpen some of the splits in the wood not forgetting to texturize the turf. This fourth piece is now done. That's it for the modeling. I hope this video is useful if you have a similar project that you want to get started. In the next video, I'll show the making of silicon molds from these models. Catch you later and thanks for watching.